Hello, welcome to a brand new video on norepinephrine production and release. So what we're going to do in this video is, is look at some basic neurophysiology that's important for pharmacology uh, and some important programs that you may be going into. So we're going to look at the most, uh, first thing is the basic synapse structure function of what we refer to as an adrenergic synapse. Um, then we're going to look at how we actually produce the biosynthetic pathway of norepinephrine and how it is produced with an amino acid called tyrosine, uh, abbreviated TYR. Uh, we'll see how we produce it, how we secrete it, and how we break it down, and then how the cells respond using an alpha receptor or a beta receptor. So let's get started and really begin to look at the overall process that we're going to see here. And we want to draw our basic uh, chemical synapse here. So I'm going to start off by drawing a synaptic terminal. And in the synaptic terminal, you may remember, uh, is generally going to be some vesicles that are going to contain neurotransmitters. But we've got to see how these vesicles are going to get filled with the neurotransmitter and produced. Now, oftentimes, Production and neurotransmitters occur up in the uh, uh, cell body, the soma, at what is called the nissel bodies. Here, uh, production is going to occur um, at the synaptic terminal. Now, I'm going to go through at first kind of a very simple breakdown, and then I'll come back and draw out the biosynthetic pathway more in depth. So what we want to look at is uh, some of these biosynthetic pathways, and we're going to start off with the source material here called tyrosine. Now tyrosine, T-Y-R as we're going to abbreviate it, is an amino acid and we'll draw out the amino acid structure later, but tyrosine has a transport protein located in the synaptic terminal that's going to bring this tyrosine molecule into our uh, synaptic terminal. Now tyrosine is going to have to chemically react uh, with, there's an enzyme here that's uh, called tyrosine hydroxylase that we're going to abbreviate TH here, tyrosine hydroxylase. Now tyrosine hydroxylase is basically going to add an OH group uh, to make a molecule uh, referred to as a catecholamine that we're going to see later. Now, when this is done, the end product here is going to be DOPA. And once DOPA is made, DOPA can then go on for some more chemistry. And an enzyme called DOPA decarboxylase will come in and chemically react to make the molecule called dopamine, abbreviated DA here, dopamine. So what we're working with here is dopamine becoming a source material for a lot of substances that we can chemically react with. Now this dopamine is going to be transported into a vesicle. And in the vesicle, there is an enzyme in here that the vesicle will contain. Uh, referred to as, uh, I'm going to write it out here, is dopamine. So we're going to put it as D beta H, and this is dopamine beta hydroxylase. And what ultimately this is going to produce is the molecule called norepinephrine. And norepinephrine, NE, which is uh, derived from dopamine. Uh, so now that it is stored in a vesicle, this vesicle can now be secreted and released through exocytosis. So we now need um, to come back and take a look at the cell that it's going to come and communicate with, the postsynaptic cell. Now on the postsynaptic cell, there's going to be some receptor proteins. And these receptor proteins fall under two classes on the postsynaptic cells. Now we can kind of get an idea and glimpse of what's going on in the cellular response and then I'll come out and draw the biosynthetic pathway out in great detail uh, drawing the chemical structures. So let's go in and let's 
color in these receptor proteins. You have alpha receptors and you have beta receptors located here on the postsynaptic membrane who can form a cell response. Now, these alpha receptors, depending on the type they are, work in some different ways. For example, G-protein link mechanisms that will allow a wide variety of responses depending upon the target tissues and cells that we're doing, uh, that we're working with here. So uh, that's what we're going to focus on here. That's something I do have a video that discusses these different receptors. If you're very interested in looking at those, they're in my neurophysiology uh, playlist. So... All right, so now that we got these receptors ready, willing, and waiting to be able to grasp onto that, I'm going to add one more here on the, on the presynaptic end of the synapse, and this is one that I will give a very specific name to. This is alpha-2. Alpha-2 receptors have the job of inhibiting the release of norepinephrine. So let's look into how this physiology happens. Now this is something that hopefully when you guys were in uh, an AMP or some of your other physiology courses that you learn how this works. But we're going to embed a protein here on the presynaptic end. And this protein is a voltage-gated calcium channel. And it being voltage-gated and lets calcium come in, Ca++, calcium cations, when an action potential travels down the synaptic terminal um, and comes down the teledendria, hits the synaptic terminal, the voltage change, that positive 30 millivolts, is going to cause a change in conformation to this, uh, allowing this to open up a little bit. So we're going to open this guy up. And when he opens up, and he opens now due to change in conformation here, um, the calcium ions that are in extracellular fluid will begin to come out. Ca++, they will come in uh, from the outside. Uh, they're going to enter into the synaptic terminal. And they're going to dock, and using something called the snare hypothesis, snare proteins, syntaxins, which we have kind of embedded here, um, and that would be another video down the line I like to do, is that these vesicles are going to move up, and they're going to fuse. So as a vesicle containing norepinephrine fuses to the cell membrane, well, they're made of the same stuff. They, uh, vesicles are composed of phospholipids, and so is the presynaptic membrane. So this norepinephrine is going to get released into the synaptic cleft. So norepinephrine release there, controlled by calcium, is going to get dumped in synaptic cleft. Now, some of this norepinephrine, for example, that gets out here uh, may just diffuse away and end up in the blood, end up somewhere else in the body. Um, but much of that is going to start binding to these receptor proteins. And when it does, it's going to get the result, the response that that cell can respond. It depends on the G proteins or the mechanism in which this receptor works. Remember, it is all about the receptor. When it comes to these kinds of chemicals, it's all about the receptor. The neurotransmitter can bind to an alpha or bind to a beta. It depends on which one is present, on what tissue, and what you're dealing with on the effector cell as to the response. It's all about the receptor. Now, some of this norepinephrine is going to react with monoamine oxidase, and it's going to degrade it and begin to reduce the amount of the neurotransmitter in the uh, synaptic cleft. And that's a basic function there that happens. Some of this norepinephrine is going to come and bind to an alpha-2. And when alpha-2s are bound to, they're going to come in and lock up this norepinephrine. They're going to do a negative feedback and prevent norepinephrine release uh, through a mechanism that we're not going to discuss here. So they're going to prevent exocytosis of that from occurring. 
So another thing, and this is about where 90% of this norepinephrine is what's going to happen to them. 90% of it is going to go in a reuptake protein. About 90% gets reuptaked so that this norepinephrine can get packed back into a vesicle uh, for a reuptake. So this is where we end up with certain drugs depression, uh, anxiety meds, they affect like reuptake or monoamine oxidase. Uh, so a lot of times you affect, if you block uh, reuptake, you keep more norepinephrine in the synapse. If you block monoamine oxidase, you keep more norepinephrine in the synapse. So this is for most of you uh, probably watching this video is the kind of core meat that you're going to need to understand. Now what I want to do is go in and spend in about half the video discussing some of the biochemistry going on here and this is probably going to go more in depth than most of you need to know and uh, but definitely well worth watching so you can see a little what's happening here from a biochemical perspective. So we're going to start off with the source material here and we're going to draw the chemical structure of the amino acid tyrosine. And to do this, we're going to start off by drawing a benzene ring. And if you have had organic chemistry, you know benzene rings very well. And this benzene ring is going to have a hydroxyl group here, an OH group, added on this part of the ring. Then we're going to come up and we're going to draw uh, this shape, uh, signifying some organic groups that will be here. And then at the end of this, we're going to put the amino group NH2. Then we're going to come up and put our carboxyl group. And uh, by the way, if you do not know, at the cor every corner there's a carbon. And we're going to put our carboxyl group on that. And this is our source material, tyrosine. Tyrosine, because here we have our, uh, we have our carboxyl, our central carbon, our amino, and our R group. So this makes us an amino acid. So now we know it's amino acid. Biochemically, there is an enzyme called tyrosine, tyrosine hydroxylase. So this enzyme that's coming in is going to tell us that we're going to be sticking a hydroxyl on tyrosine. So as we draw tyrosine, drawing this lovely little um, benzene ring who already had one OH, we're going to add another OH to this benzene ring. And this is what we call a catechol. Catecholes, this is why norepinephrine is a catecholamine, and so is dopamine a catecholamine, is they have a benzene ring with two hydroxyls on it, making it a catechol. And to continue to make this molecule dopa, we have to have our um, basic structure here, our NH2, our uh, carboxyl group, making this, let me clean that up, make that look a little nicer there, making this molecule here dopa. So this is dopa, and dopa is a catecholamine as well. Uh, so what's going to happen is dopa undergoes a chemical reaction with dopa decarboxylase. So this is telling me we're going to remove our carboxyl. We're going to snip it off. So we're going to draw our benzene ring here uh, first. And then we're going to add on our two uh, OHs, making this a catechol. Some basic organic chemistry there. And then we're going to put on that structure there with our NH2. So we have removed the COOH, has been removed by the decarboxylase. So this is what uh, this is uh, how that's happened. So now what we've got is a new molecule called dopamine. So this dopamine, why is it now no longer dope? It's got the amine but not the carboxyl group. So it's dopamine. Now it's still got the catechol, so it is a catecholamine. 
So now we're going to take this molecule. Our last chemical reaction is where we are going to take what is called dopamine, dopamine beta hydroxylase. And sometimes uh, my when I try to write with my uh, stylus here, uh, dopamine beta hydroxylase you're going to end up uh, with a new chemical structure here. Now, dopamine can be used, um, and that is a very interesting chemical reaction. So this is a hydroxylase. Hydroxylases are going to add hydroxyls. So they're going to add a hydroxyl right where I've drawn it there. Uh, they're going to add a hydroxyl there, and then we're going to have our NH2 there. So we have now made norepinephrine. So this is the biosynthetic pathway. For those of you that need to do that, I'm going to tell you the only way I could personally learn this is drawing it out. Um, and uh, if you're in a neuro program, you're going to have to draw these and draw these and draw these. And this is something you get used to doing. Uh, so, uh, getting these biosynthetic pathways down is important for med school and a few other places like that uh, if you're looking at pharmacology. So, if we were to take all these drawings, you could literally put those in and show how this process works. So, I really hope you found this video helpful, especially here for a lot of you taking some advanced level medical pharmacology, pharmacy school, etc. can find this helpful in your understanding of the overall production from tyrosine to dopa, to dopamine, to norepinephrine, looking at the biochemical structure and the organic reactions that are occurring. So I don't go into the mechanisms here, those things, those are some things you guys will learn in organic chemistry for those who haven't had it. So this concludes my video on the uh, uh, production and secretion of norepinephrine. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do, please let me know some vi uh, future videos and topics you would like to see. Don't forget to give me a, a, a like rating if you like what I'm doing. And also, please comment to let me know how I can improve. I want to make the videos better for you. So, but this concludes my video on norepinephrine production and secretion. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the very next one. Thank you.